Hello and welcome to Tuesday Newsday, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. So it's been 30 years since their last attempt, but Nintendo may be finally taking a stab at VR again. The Meta Quest 3 may be right around the corner, but a $200 headset from Meta is looking to launch next year, which is probably one of the biggest deals for the entire VR industry that I've seen in a long time. Plus, we got tons of insane VR research that I think you'll really enjoy if you like VR at all. We got all that and so much more, so let's just get right into the news. So right now, in-VR interaction with virtual objects is usually done through haptics, the same kind of haptics that have been found in game controllers for the past 20 years. And while I've explored plenty of accessories in the past looking to solve some of the disconnect between the virtual and reality, nobody's really nailed the formula down yet. There's a lot of exploration that still needs to be done. And turns out, a few new prototypes have just popped up that look really promising. Let's start with something from Sony, actually. This is their augmented haptic experience. Basically, a VR controller that takes the shape of a baton, but inside, there's a weight that's controlled by a precise motor that can be shifted based on all sorts of input. The researchers put together a demo that showed off the feeling of an umbrella opening, shooting a gun, and slicing through enemies. And the written feedback showed that when in VR, the sensation of the weight shifting felt incredibly realistic. You don't always have to make something actually realistic feeling for it to feel real in VR. Now, Sony doesn't have a plan to commercialize these specific prototypes, but they've been known to do crazy things with their controllers in the past, so I wouldn't say it's off the table. However, that wasn't the crazy one that I want to talk about. This is the Somata Shift from the University of Tokyo, a crazy gauntlet that uses two opposing gyros or spinning weights mounted on a gimbal. And this setup can almost defy gravity and weight, at least perceptually. The Somata Shift basically makes your arm movements feel heavier or lighter using these gyros, which I'm sure you can imagine just how useful and immersive that would be in VR, and I could also imagine how trippy it would be to be immersed in a VR simulation and quite literally feel gravity get stronger or weaker as something happens in-game. An interesting demo they showed off this technology was with two buttons placed in front of the user. One was really difficult to press, like there's an opposing force pulling or pushing your arm away from pressing it. The other one was extremely easy to press as the gyros guided the arm towards the button. Some really cool stuff, even if it's a little bulky for practical usage. But then there's Jump Mod. Eh, honestly, the uh, weirdest out of the three, at least to me. It's basically the same idea as Sony's prototype, except it's a massive backpack that augments your jumps, making it feel like you jumped significantly higher, or even simulating landing in different materials like mud. It's just that I don't know if I'd really want to be using this for very long. But the last of these prototypes is something that'll look really familiar if you're aware of Lucas's DIY VR gloves. Basically, a haptic glove solution that allows you to feel virtual objects. Except this is done even smaller and for even cheaper, possibly even just a few bucks. The setup is just a set of rings that go on your fingertips. Each one has a small motor with a few strings attached. And when you touch something in VR, the string constricts, making it feel like you actually touch something with the pads of your fingers. Really awesome stuff all around, and while this research may not come to your Amazon wishlist page anytime soon, these sorts of projects are truly invaluable to building immersive technology for the masses in the future. And if there's one thing I've learned after testing so many things, it's not so much about the complexity of the hardware, but instead how it's implemented. So by all means, please test away. And now before we get into this $200 mass adoption quest that's supposedly coming before you know it, let's talk about SideQuest. And if you don't know what SideQuest is, it's an awesome app app store for VR content that works on almost every VR headset, allowing you to sideload apps that aren't on the Quest or other stores. It's an amazing tool, and I think almost everyone knows about it, especially if you have a Quest. And well, if you're looking to buy a Quest 3 in the coming months, SideQuest may be able to help as they've actually sponsored this video to have me announce that they are officially giving away a Quest 3 every single week until Christmas on their brand new social VR platform called Banter. It's a Bone Lab-like physics-based social VR game, which is freaking awesome. There's kind of nothing like it out there.
there and it's free too. And if you want to take part in these giveaways, you actually don't even need to be in VR. While the giveaways are in banter, it is launching on Steam for PC VR and flat screen on the 15th of this month. And if you're on Quest, well, you could just download it on SideQuest. This is without a doubt the best sponsor I've ever had of all time. I love SideQuest and I think everyone does. So thank you so much for supporting the channel, but also for getting more headsets in more people's hands. That's what I'm all about. So a link is in the description and pin comment for you to check it out. But let's go back to the news. So new information just dropped on a super cheap VR headset coming from Meta in just a year, as well as surprisingly a new Quest Pro model. And both of these things give us some really deep insights as to where Meta's hardware is headed in the future. Reportedly, Meta and LG are working together on one of these headsets and it isn't the cheap one. Instead, it's stated that their collaborative effort will be a headset that should cost less than $2,000. Now, there's not much information on this and it's still a long way away, planned for a 2025 release, but it's still interesting to mention. This headset would be a direct competitor to both the Apple Vision Pro and Samsung's upcoming headset at the high end of mixed reality devices. And I should also say that the Korean article this was published within calls this LG Meta headset the Meta Quest 4 Pro, not 3 Pro or Meta Quest Pro 2, but instead the Quest 4 Pro, which makes it seem like there'll also be a Quest 4 by 2025-ish as well. Which actually kind of makes sense if you break it down. You've got the Quest 3 coming in just a month, and then next year a significantly cheaper version of the Quest 3 is supposedly coming, and then in 2025 you've got Quest 4 and Quest 4 Pro. Which brings us to the other headset that is probably way more interesting to most of you that was also detailed in this industry report. So as we all know, Quest 3 is launching at $500 in just about a month, but in just a year a much cheaper version of it is supposedly coming, and it would likely resembles something similar to a Quest 3 Lite of sorts. Maybe a Quest 3 Go, who knows? I can imagine that this version of the Quest 3 would just omit some of the more expensive features that are on the Quest 3. Perhaps it'll launch without controllers like the old Oculus Go. Meta has hinted at something like that for quite a while now, and with how good hand tracking is getting, it's totally plausible. Or maybe it'll just be a Quest 3 without a depth sensor, or without the pancake lenses. We really don't know yet, we only have this basic picture. But what I can say is that if Meta actually releases a $200 VR headset that is anywhere even close to as capable as the Quest 3, that would probably be the single biggest jump VR has ever seen in terms of adoption, at least if done right. Which I hope it's done right because I don't think Meta really expects the Quest 3 to be anywhere close to as big of a deal as the Quest 2 was. I personally sort of doubt they'll sell the 20 million the Quest 2 did, especially out of the gate even if it does look amazing and it's better in every way. It's still expensive. Whereas if this new Quest 3 Lite version does end up happening for $200, well, now that's the kind of headset I could really see taking off to demolish Quest 2 sales even. Hence bringing in a lot of players, and along with players comes lots of developers. And I'm gonna put in my prediction now, you can come back and let me know if I'm right in a year and a half or so, but 2024, and in particular the Christmas of 2024 and the beginning of 2025 are going to be massive years for VR, if not the biggest years of VR we've ever had. That is if this headset actually does come out. But of course, all this being said, industry reports, even somewhat reputable ones like this one, are still just reports. And until Meta themselves announce something, it's as good as a rumor. So take your grain of salt. Meta has been known to shuffle around headset designs and prototypes all the time, so we'll just have to wait and see. But I also gotta say, I'm pretty on board with this idea though. In the future to have three headsets at all times essentially, the mainline flagship headset, the super cheap but still pretty good version, and then the top of the line crazy enterprise headset, and they all drive different sectors of VR in their own ways. And I hope more companies like Pico and HTC Vive also hop on that train as well. I think it's a good one. Okay, so if there is one company that I think could really change the face of VR forever, it's actually not Apple, it's Nintendo. 
Look, we've got pretty decent VR hardware by this point, and we've had it for a while, and it's only getting better. What we're really missing is a big catalog of compelling games and titles. And turns out there are two things Nintendo is really good at despite their other faults. One is their compelling titles, that's why people stick around. And two, they're really good at innovating their games to work on weird or even underpowered hardware. And well, don't get too excited yet, but according to a relatively good source that has been added accurate on a few Nintendo leaks in the past, the company is in fact working on a VR headset. But not only that, the leak specifies that this prototype has been around for a decent amount of time now. It uses micro OLED displays and is currently in testing. It's also stated that Nintendo is working with Google and another company they've acquired to build this headset. Some other details is that this would be an independent piece of hardware, so it wouldn't be tethered to a Switch or a Switch 2 for example, and that it is in fact for domestic use. So at home. This isn't a theme park device, in other words. And while there is no way to really prove the validity of this information, I think it's really worth at least thinking about. Nintendo's been known for their weird takes on hardware, and they've been pretty surprisingly forward-thinking over the past decade or two. I mean, between motion controls a decade ago, 3D displays, their Labo and augmented reality games more recently, I would not be surprised in the slightest if Nintendo has already been messing around with VR prototypes for a while now. And and in my opinion, it's not so much a matter of if Nintendo gets into VR, it's a matter of when and how. <laughs> and I think the only way that Nintendo doesn't do VR at some point is if they go bankrupt. It might take 10 years, but we'll see it eventually. Now, whether this device that's being tested is actually ever going to get released is a whole different thing, and this is something that we just have to wait to see or just wait for more leaks. But man, just imagine though, between a $200 Quest and Nintendo thinking about VR hardware, and software. If you were ever running out of VR industry hopium, well, here's a fresh dose. Things are looking pretty exciting. But on to a few things that are a bit more grounded in reality. I think the first time I read Ready Player One, one of the most interesting aspects of the story's world wasn't so much the hardware or the Oasis itself, but it was actually how public schools were handled. I just found it a fascinating idea that you could go to school and possibly even receive a better education by using VR. It's like a VR chat high school almost. And this very concept is turning out to be a very real thing today. The Florida-based Optima Academy is a current modern-day school available from kindergarten to ninth graders that takes place entirely online. Now, that's nothing super new, and this isn't all set in virtual reality, but VR is where Optima Academy holds almost all of its extracurricular activities, whether they be a field trip, lab, history lessons, and they even hold some classes in VR. And I've always just imagined the possibility of of a VR-based primary school where your lessons are closer to a magic school bus adventure than just sitting at a desk all day. I know I would have enjoyed school a lot more as a kid. And I gotta say, their VR implementations don't really look that good right now. Like, honestly, they don't look amazing. But the fact that this even exists and it is a viable option for people to go to school and do things in VR is amazing. And of course, we gotta start somewhere if we want that to actually happen. So if you're one of the people that have modded out your quest to like crazy, I do got some bad news for you. It seems that accessories built for the Quest 2 will not be compatible with the Quest 3. A recent photo taken of the accessory side panel puts the two head straps next to each other and they're clearly just different sizes. Now, people are crazy and they mod all sorts of things to work with things they're not supposed to, but out of the box, it looks like you'll have to reorder a lot of your comfort accessories if you do upgrade. That's something to think about. On the flip side, I got some great news. Now, if you're already deep in the Echo VR community, you'll probably already know about this, but for everybody that doesn't, another axiom the creators of Gorilla Tag have teased that they are working on a spiritual successor to the recently shut down Echo VR. And this is not just a remake of Echo, it's a total reimagining. Taking what the studio has learned from Gorilla Tag and Echo and making something totally new that's in their own flavor. It's estimated this game will launch maybe late next year, which is a while, but it is an early access for testing and it's really good to see nonetheless. It's it's also a really cool story as well because Lemming, the creator of Gorilla Tag and Another Axiom, actually got their start in VR in Echo VR as a champion, so it's a bit of a return to form. And I can't wait to see what they cook up. Alright, so I wanted to say that in case you wanted some behind the scenes videos and some extra content, I do have a bunch of content on my Patreon which you can check out below, but I of course wanted to say thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas. I couldn't do any of this without 
without you and I appreciate it endlessly. Thank you for supporting VR content like this. And thank you to SideQuest as well. Man, SideQuest, that's crazy. Never thought that would happen. <laughs> of course, don't forget to like this video if you loved it. Subscribe if you want more of this and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.